I'm Julie Weisenhorn. I'm an extension educator at the University of Minnesota, and I have the privilege of being a uh, co-collaborator on the CENUSA Objective 9, which is about extension and research. In our case, we are working with Master Gardener volunteers. In Minnesota, we have about 2,400 Master Gardeners who are active, and about 40 to 50 of them are involved in this particular uh, research project. We have four sites around Minnesota, one here at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum in Chanhassen, Minnesota. We also have a site on the St. Paul campus in Cloquet at the Fond du Lac Tribal Community and also uh, in Andover at our Extension and County Regional Center. And so we're looking at basically how can you use biochar as a home gardener and what kind of soil and what kind of conditions might you have that warrant using a biochar as a soil amendment. So we have planted each site with three different plots. One is a control, one is a treatment one, and that's a half a pound per square foot of biochar. And the third is treatment two, which is a full pound of biochar per square foot. And we are using a hard oak uh, uh, biochar from Royal Oak Industries. They donated that as part of the project. And we have amended those soils. So we're in the third year now at the locations. And the plants that we selected are plants that are readily available to home gardeners. So these are commonly found tomatoes, like celebrity tomatoes, uh, blue curled vates, uh, kale, and tasty green cucumbers. So they're seeds and transplants that are easily found in the marketplace. And what our volunteers are looking at is primarily what kinds of plant performance are you observing? An excess of fruits or disease resistance or size of plants? And then also in general, how easy is it to plant and use and work with biochar? We also look a lot at the education value and how are we going to teach people about using biochar? How would they decide that they need biochar? Or how would they decide uh, what kind of biochar to use? Those are all factors that we're looking at as part of this research project. So far, some of the results that we've seen primarily have to do with using biochar. What our volunteers have given us as feedback is that they have not had to till, and they have been easily, it's been really easy in the spring to plant. And so uh, that's been a big plus because we want to look at compacted soils and we have a lot of clay soil in Minnesota, and particularly around the central and southern region. So if they don't, people don't have to till, if it's easier to plant, that's one really good use for biochar for amending these heavier soils. Another uh, result that we're observing and, and uh, planning to measure a little bit more specifically is the moisture retention of the soils that have been amended with biochar, and particularly in those two sandy soil sites. Uh, up at Cloquet and up at Andover. Those are really poor soils. They rate very low on organic matter, and we want to be able to say to people, if you have poor soils, this might be, an, uh, might be an option for you to help amend those soils to retain water. Well, we've got about another year or so on this project, and uh, what we're hoping to find is that we can give some kind of feedback back to citizens about biochar, and also more than that even is increasing their awareness of the product and the awareness of the benefits of the product and some of the research that's been going on. It's been beneficial to have so many master gardeners working on it. They've spoken at the state fair and county fairs. We've produced a lot of research and marketing materials that they've been able to use and also uh, done some several presentations and videos as well. So it's also increasing the awareness of, of this project and the USD funded project and this multi-state project that's called Sun USA.